Neil McCabe is with us. He is the conservative commentator, editor of Guns and Patriots newsletter. Gunsandpatriots.com is the website. Twitter, Neil W. McCabe, M-C-C-A-B-E. And there's this uh, article out that suggests that President Obama, presumably after the elections, uh, when he signs the new NDAA, because the Constitution says you can only fund the military for two years at a time, when he signs the new defense authorization bill, which uh, always includes a provision put in there by Republicans saying that none of this money can be used to close Gitmo, that he's, sim- he's going to add a signing statement to it and simply say, you know, you're, you're stepping on my rights under the Constitution. I'm going to ignore this part of this bill. And then he's going to close Gitmo. And uh, this seems to have you quite concerned, Neil. Do I have that right? Well, I'm concerned uh, for two reasons, Tom. The first reason is I don't necessarily trust President Obama to have the same national concern, con- security concerns that I have. I, I think that he's I think he's dismissive and callous uh, about those things, about the dangers facing us. And, the and, and thing, you're though, scared Tom, and shaking, right? I thought you had a gun. I, well, listen, Tom, I mean, it's like I'm ready. I mean, it's, uh, if those five Taliban commanders that he let loose on the world come after me, I mean, I'll give them a fight. I'll probably take one of them out at least. I mean, five on one. Well, chill I mean, out I'll, then. Uh, but seriously, Tom, you know, the second thing is that you yourself said that the Constitution says that Congress has to pass a defense budget. Uh, you know, they can only go two years out. It doesn't say you must pass a defense budget, but the president can do what he wants anyway. Uh, right. Yeah. I mean, the signing statement, right, basically says, you know, I I have to go through the motions of doing this you know, at least right. every two years, but I'm going to put a signing statement on saying that my, you know, my authority overrides whatever this document says. Now, I, you know, if, to, to look for an analogy, if, 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 if I was you and I wanted to be arguing with me about this, I would be pointing to the, to the, um, uh, what was it, the, the Bolin Amendment that, uh, that was passed back in the early 1980s that said that Ronald Reagan could not use any federal money to support the Contras in Nicaragua, El Salvador, or Guatemala, specifically right. uh, Nicaragua. And so Reagan got around that by selling illegally, uh, selling weapons to the Iranians. There was an embargo and all kinds of horrible things. And then taking the money from the Iranians and using it to buy weapons in the United States that were then transshipped down to uh, Guatemala and Nicaragua, and then um, taking and then selling those weapons to the Contras at a discounted price. But usually they were apparently paying for them oh, with, with cocaine, which the Reagan administration then brought back to the United States and was selling in Los Angeles. And, and uh, you know, in fact, there's a new movie out about this. And well, uh, and and Tom, I would I, mean, I would agree with you that Reagan should not have defied the Boland Amendment and and I you know I think that there's so a, Reagan was Reagan Reagan should have just done whatever he wanted he should have just no I'm it. I'm saying I mean Reagan I still sh- have my Johnny I still have a button Tom somewhere that says Johnny Tremaine was a contra I don't remember who Johnny Tremaine was I'm sorry it was a little book about the American Revolution that they made us watch oh yeah okay you're you're talking yeah uh, yeah. yeah he was a contra. You know, I mean, well, he wasn't really. I mean, the Contras were were socialists, but you know, which is what made Reagan crazy about them. I, th- but, I think your point, though, Tom, is that uh, at the time you would have preferred Reagan had just put a signing statement on the Boland Amendment saying, "Thank you, Congress, but I'm going to go my own way." No, I'm not saying that. I I am saying that if that's the way that President Obama does it. And, you know, there's another option. And the other option is that he vetoes the NDAA and says, right. go back and do it again. And which is high stakes chicken. But in whether he does either one of those two things, if he does it by signing statement and then goes ahead and, and, and violates the law, then then I would have a very hard time defending that action. As much as I think that, you know, this has just been political sabotage by Republicans. The recidivism rate of people from Guantanamo is is under seven percent. Out of our federal prisons, it's over seventy percent. I mean, this is, and, and I don't know if you saw the article about Denmark, where Denmark those, is actually inviting these people into their country. And they, those seven percent, Tom, are bombing buses. Those seven percent are fighting our Israeli allies. I mean, those seven percent are now, you know, in ISIS. 
I mean, so it's not the same as somebody a shoplifter. There are sort of there are 80 guys, 86 people in Guantanamo who the Bush administration said had no terrorist connections whatsoever. They were taxi Correct. drivers. They were next door neighbors who who had pissed off somebody. Pardon my my French. Uh, who had angered somebody. No, 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 and, you're absolutely correct. And I, they I got sold you. for 5,000 bucks, and they're sitting in Guantanamo right now. And and oh, and the president, you know, President Bush wanted to release these people. Uh, he didn't He didn't do it. And President Obama said he was going to, and he, and he should be able to. And this problem, is... Problem, Tom, and you and I have had this... This reflects very before. badly on this country. The, the problem is, even though these these, tragically, these innocent men... Have been have been detained for years and years, and it's completely a crime that they're there. But if they are dangerous to the United States, why would you release them? What I mean, do you do become, with somebody who has been radicalized, Tom? No, if Neil, this, this, radicalized, this, there's the same argument used to, to be made uh, about people who were uh, inappropriately convicted of crimes. There was a guy that just was released from prison after 22 years for a murder rape that he didn't commit. And, you know, they proved it with DNA and and, you know, it's there used to be the argument that don't let those people out, even if we know that they're innocent, because the guy's been in jail for 20 years. Now he's a hardened criminal. And and I think that that's nonsense. And I and I and I think that if you if you I, I don't know if you saw the article in The Guardian this morning, Neil, but about how Denmark is actually welcoming people like this into their country. These you know, they're they're saying to people who are fighting with ISIS in Syria, come to Denmark. We'll, we'll, well get you a I job, no... we'll give you a free education, and what's happening is they are coming to Denmark, and they're sa- and they're repudiating their past. You know, it's it's like FDR's old thing, the best welfare program is a job. It's like if you give people dignity, if you give them a job, if you give them a decent life, they don't they don't feel the need to be, you know, these crazies anymore. I think with these 86 people, if no country will take them, we should take them. We should say, you know, we're really sorry what George W. Bush did to you illegally, immorally, yes. in front of the national stage. Here's a million dollars, which is oh, nothing well, in the well. U.S. budget. Buy yourself a house. Have a good life. If somebody's going to give you a job, we're going to find employment for you. And and you know, but Tom, you know, have you your know life that back. Some of, these, some, some of these guys are dangerous. No, and some of them have proven to be. I dangerous. am not talking. Some, some of them. There's some of six them have, guys at Guantanamo who are dangerous that we know of, and for those well, guys, put them in a federal prison. There used to be eleven, but five of them were released for uh, for Bergdahl. My point. So you've got six guys in, in Guantanamo. Put them in the federal prisons. Nobody's ever escaped from Leavenworth. Well, why not? You know, you don't have to cower in your bedroom or in your bathroom, Neil. You don't have to worry. Well, I, I am worried because uh, you know and I know that these people show up in the field of battle fighting us in Afghanistan. It's not my battle. A, we shouldn't be in Afghanistan. Well, if they're shooting Americans, that's our battle. Well, that we shouldn't have Americans there. Well, I, well while they're, they're there, I don't want them shooting in Americans. Yeah. See, I this is I think this is a specious argument. Anyhow, Neil, I, I get where you're coming from, and I get how Republicans are trying to sell fear, you know, to, to do this, and it's just, I, I think it's tragic. Anyhow, Neil, McC- Neil McCabe, the conservative commentator, editor of Guns and Patriots newsletter, gunsandpatriots.com is the website. Neil, thanks for dropping by. Great to be with you. It's always good talking with you. We'll be back. <laughs> 